Today's conversation, friends, is going to be around the, the switch um, from the cross planning to the cross of sleeping Phoenix. I have done actually quite a few videos about this. And I, I came across another piece of information that I had forgotten about. And because there's so much out there. So I just want to share this with you so that you can begin to mm, use discernment and awareness as your very first process in your business, um, in your life, in your relationships. And that is what I help people with in the very first pillar of my program is the awareness aspect. And I'm not saying that you have to see life through my lens at all. I just want to bring you this information so that you can see it through a different light so that the nervous system doesn't need to be on heightened awareness continuously. Okay. And if you are listening through the podcast, I am going to be sharing some images today. I'm actually going to be uh, speaking to the body graphs of these two crosses. And if you need to go to the YouTube channel, it'll be in the link in the description so that you can see the visualization. I will do my best to uh, portray the languaging in a way that you can just sit back in your podcast and understand it and get a sense of what's going on. I'm also going to take off my video so that you can see the screen at a deeper level and we can have a conversation. All right. So the cross of planning did its job. And what I mean by that is this, the 4037 that has been the ruling energy behind the cross of the sleeping Phoenix was, or sorry, be, be, behind the cross of planning was large business, um, governments, large organizations. And at the heart and soul of what this is, this is about delivering, delivering resources. Um, this is all about denying or delivering resources. That's what the 40 at its heart and soul actually does. So the tribe is reliant upon who's going to dish it out, who is going to deliver it, who's going to deny it. And that has been a massive uh, background frequency for us for 412 years. And as we move closer to 2027, this energy field is breaking down and we can feel it. They are, um, and I say they, because there, there are families, that's the 37, there are families that um, have been a part of this uh, background frequency for the last 400 years, because that's what it was designed for. And that's okay. We just need to see it as an acceptance factor, because once we see it as an acceptance factor, and we don't judge it for what it was doing or what it is doing, then all of a sudden what happens is we can let go of the judgment. We can move into a space of awareness. So the cross of planning, which also has the cross of Maya in it, this 412 year cycle, what it was indicating to us is this, is the nature of of the, the energy field was what we call that it's the ninth gate. And right now we're in the 9.1. So everything right at this moment, we're in the first line of all of these gates that I'm going to talk about. And the first line is all about information. It's all about studying. It's all about um, gathering information so that there's a solid foundation. And the first line always wants a solid foundation so that it can then move up in the hexagram and get itself out into the world. The larger energy field that's in the background, Ra called it the global orchestrated directory. And I'm a flat earther, so I don't believe that there is a globe. I don't believe that um, we are on this finite energy field of what we would think is earth. I think we're on a flat earth. And I think that there is uh, many, many, many um, spaces for us to move as humanity. Anyways, that's my belief. You don't have to believe that. Um, so the first line energy field, this global orchestrated directory, it is shifting to the sixth line. And in this, in this larger energy field, we always go from the six down to the one. So it always moves backwards compared to everything else. So in, 
in the cross of planning right at the moment, we have this focus of sensibility. We have the example of manifestation of the 32.1. We have the temple of 40.1 deliverance in this recuperation. We have the leader, 62.1 details, it's routine. The pattern is 16.1, enthusiasm, delusion. Now I'm just calling these off for the podcast people. The plan, 42.1, growth and diversification. The, the way is the 37.1, friendship, mother, father. And the witness is 61.1, inner truth or occult knowledge. Now, when I look at this, when I take all of this together, um, manifestation has been a part of their um, reality. They've been planning and manifesting the tribe, the human tribe, our reality. They've been manifesting it. And what's interesting is that what they did for us, this temple, this recuperation, the temple really is the physical body and this recuperation aspect. So in the last couple of years, what they, they kind of, um, they're helping us move into the sleeping Phoenix, even though they don't want to let go of their cross of planning is that they allowed us to actually, you know, go into recuperation mode. Um, Some of us chose that path. We chose to recuperate. We chose to take the last two years and learn more about ourselves, to go deeper, to find the information that we need. Others chose to stay on a heightened, um, afraid, worried aspect. Now, please know that I am compassionate about the the entirety of what is happening. I am I am not um, I am not saying that the destruction of humanity is a good thing. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it is happening. Evil is present. The darkness is present, and we get to choose how we interact with it. So for me, I took this last two years to stay in that recuperation mode to not go out and be afraid or scared or worried. I chose to um, help the energy field of the sleeping Phoenix get heralded in. So the cross of the sleeping Phoenix routine. So it kept you in a routine for a very long time. This has been happening. The first line has been happening since the fifties. And that routine truly has been, um, you know, get up, go to work. And then they disrupted that. And then it's like, hold on a minute, you just took away my whole routine. Now, what do I do? Now, what do I do? How do I cope through this? That's really the cross of sleeping uh, or cross of the of planning has asked you, um, you know, has kind of been poking at you in different ways so that that reliance on um, how your reality is being manifested, that reliance on who's delivering the goods or who's denying me the goods, that reliance on that routine um, was disrupted. And again, good, bad, right, wrong, doesn't matter. It happened. And the ninth gate, this focus of sensibility, what they did is they tried to convince you that science um, was what we needed to, to move towards. That's, you know, that's the nature of, of where we were as a, as, a, as a humanity was we, we relied for the last 412 years on a science that, now let's take a look at the pattern, was actually delusional. And why is it delusional? Because the 16 is also a part of the scientific walkway. And the 16 sits in delusion right now, first line. So it's a delusional sensibility. It's a delusional manifestation. It's a delusional recuperation. It's a delusional routine. Okay. And then the plan was this growth diversification. Now for me, um, I look at words way differently now that I understand uh, Ra's transmissions at a deeper cellular level. And so many things can have judgments on them. And I believe that spell, spelling, the English language, when we spell things out, I believe that there is uh, a hypnosis that they put us under. And it is stemmed from the, the wording, the languaging, and diversification. They have butchered this, um, this word. They've created um, division 
based off of their idea of seeing diversification. And for me, we need diversification. We need 8 billion different people uh, moving through their own spiritual aspect, moving through their own human experience. But what we've been presented as diversification has um, been delusional. The way the mother, father, this friendship, this is really interesting. Again, the 37. So the 37 is family. And there's a group of families on this earth plane. And you might call me a conspiracy theorist. You might call me whatever, and it's okay. You don't have to be here if you don't, uh, don't have the same thought pattern. And I'm okay with that. There's a group of families that utilized this cross of planning for their own benefit. And it is what it is. It was designed for that. It's just the awareness of it that makes it go, oh, okay, it happened. It's happening. And we're moving into a whole new energy field so we can accept it and move on. Again, I am not condoning the, the, the um, darkness and the evilness that has come out of this last 412 years. I'm not condoning that. I'm just saying that there, it's present and we get to choose how we interact with it. And the witness has been this inner truth, this occult knowledge. And I, for me, that is um, been the saving grace is this energy field has been there. The witness is the occult knowledge. And, and Ra really talked a lot about the witness. How are we witnessing our, our reality? And for 412 years, it has been through a lens of quote unquote occult knowledge. So we can look at this through um, the dysfunction of, of how they twisted the, the occult knowledge to their benefit. Or we can also look at it as, okay, there was a veil. We couldn't see it. We didn't understand it. So we followed along until all of a sudden we became this, this aspect that could see the occult knowledge and utilize it for ourselves and manifest our own reality instead of living in their reality, okay? Now, if we look at the cross of the sleeping phoenix, this is a totally different aspect. This is so far away from the cross of landing. It's so fun to watch this shift happening. Now, if you're here, I think um, this is just my perspective. And that's why you're here, because this is all I share with you is my perspective. I think that anybody that's on this cusp of energy right now has been here before on many cusps of energy. And... Um, we've played all roles. We played in the darkness. We played in the light. We played in the on the sidelines. We've played in the game. We've um, been the the game creator. We've done it all. And I think that we are here in our particular meat suits at this moment, playing the role that's perfect for us. So my role is to be the contagion for human design and the purity of the information. So the cross of the sleeping phoenix and this cross of penetration that we're moving into, it's really, um, it, now we're going into the sixth line. What is the sixth line? The sixth line is the role model. The sixth line is uh, sitting on the shoreline, looking out at the horizon. Um, it's in awe of what's taking place out there. Uh, it is not worried about a solid foundation. It is more worried about just being it's and I, I don't I don't really want to use the word worry the entirety of the role model and leadership in this sixth line is can you be it can you represent it it's not about putting um, you know gurus on a mountaintop it's about sitting on the shoreline and just taking a breath just being it so the sleeping phoenix and penetration, what it is asking us to do is lean into the new pattern of wisdom. And we learn that through self-awareness. So um, I'm gonna draw a little bit on, on, on the uh, YouTube video. Now, this wisdom aspect, this is what's important. Why? 
Because what we've done for 412 years and way before that is that we gave away our personal power. We gave it away to the outside of us. And Sleeping Phoenix is saying, okay, now we're going to bring it back in. The 34 is connected to the 20 and it's also connected to the 57. This is integration. This is us reintegrating our own personal power into the, the pattern. And this is going to be the new nature that happens on our planet. It's not science-based, it's empowered-based. It is individuality-based. It is uniqueness-based. And for probably, you know, we have six lines and they go about 400 years. So we're looking at about a 50 year span. This is really what's happening is that this leadership has to come from the taking back your personal power. And what I love is that personal power can only be taken away if there's a reaction from the conditioned mind. So, you know, I'll give you an example. In um, a lot of my writings, in a lot of my uh, PDFs, I have typos, I have errors, and I have clients that lash out and send me absolutely crazy, crazy comments or crazy emails or direct message me and just like rip me for having typos, having errors in my, in my PDFs. And I could choose to turtle under that, but I interact with that in a new way because I recognize that it's their reactionary mind. They just gave me their power. I don't want their power. And I definitely don't want to give my power to them. So I choose to just see it for what it is and I move past it. I accept that they're upset. And if a typo in my, my transmission can create such a reaction, then, you know, that I don't live in that world. I do not live in that world at all. Okay. Now I'm not perfect. Don't get me wrong. Um, I also, you know, I have my judgments at times. I definitely do. But it's really to recognize the wisdom and the pattern that we're moving into is self-awareness. What's happening? The nature is, is going through the 34 common sense. And the common sense comes from machismo. Machismo is really not allowing anybody else to, to affect your personal power. The example is going to be how you utilize your intuition, how you utilize your integration of self. And it's about that acuteness. It's learning from acuteness. When, when the intuition speaks, and again, the intuition is very, very um, subtle. It's very calm. It's very quiet. Do you have the capacity to, to lean into the wisdom of it and the common sense that's showing up? And utilize the intuition in a whole new way, not that nasty conditioned mind. Okay. The temple is all about uh, the one night stand. And this for me is, I think it's, um, again, my judgment of it, my opinion of it is it can be uh, harsh when people see this one night stand. Oh, but this is about interacting, being open to interacting with different aspects and, and gathering the wisdom, utilizing the common sense, you know, um, so that you can, can create, procreate and create on this world in a different way. Um, it's that openness to, to interact and create unions. And a union might only be for a very brief moment of time but it also might be for a longer period of time. And it all starts with a one night stand, a, 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 that first interaction. So the leader, the leader of this is 53. This is about phasing and it, it's, it's seated in practicality. So being practical as we move into 
um, this new energy field and phasing, phasing out the old, phasing in the new, instead of being really harsh, it's phasing it in. Okay. And phasing in this new way of life, because it is a new way of life. Uh, we have been, uh, you know, <laughs> we've been learning what the cross of the planning had, had in store for us. And it's now breaking down and we need to phase out the old and bring in the new. And that's what, that's what a role model does. It, it tries it, it tests it. Six lines come from the birth of the third line. It comes from a trial and error aspect. It has to try it, experiment with it. The 51, this is probably my most favorite aspect besides the 20, is the separation. And what we're learning here is in the heart or the ego center is we're separating from the tribe. We're separating from this reliance on the tribe to a reliance on self. And we need to adapt to that. And the separation aspect of this uh, can feel very shocking. It can, um, it might be bothersome for you, but that's where we're moving. So can you see it, be aware of it and plant seeds for anybody else that needs to have their awareness or their awakening aspect? It doesn't have to be harsh. 51 is shock. Um, I think that there's going to be a massive um, shock to humanity when they actually recognize truly what has been happening. But it is what it is. It happened and it was designed for that. The way is the 55. And this is a beautiful aspect. The 55, the heart and soul of the sixth line is innocence. But the six lines actually selfishness. So we need to lean into, and you've heard me say this in the 27, the 27 also had its, it had its foundation in selfishness. Now what the 55.6 is saying, this is actually how we need to be as role models so that our abundance factor, so that our, um, so that our spirit can be reconnected. And it's, it's through selfishness. It is about being selfish with, um, who you are, who you give your power away to, how you use your intuition, how you lean into the wisdom, how you use separation as a way to really reconnect with your own self and your own spirit. And then the witness. This is why I shifted my whole perspective into business. And the witness, this 54, this is the beginning aspects of capitalism. And 54.3 is covert interaction and 54.6 is selectivity. We need to be selective in our businesses. Only work with those that are on your fractal line. Um, you do not need to get noisy. There is no pressure to uh, get, 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 and have, have, have more. That's not what this is about. What this is, is it's about being selective. And this is all about creating these covert interactions. And you can take that as a negative word if you want to, or a negative way, but really, really um, connecting with those people that are like-minded, that, that have stepped into their own individuality, that are aware. And there's this deeper level of waiting for, for the acceptance, being embracing the acceptance. Okay. Now, Here's also what I want to share. I also follow Greg Braden and Dr. Joe Dispenza. And Greg Braden, I'm going to share a video in the link. Um, he's been working with the Heart Math Institute, and so has Dr. Dispenza for years. The Heart Math Institute, I will just take this off. Of, well, no, I'll just leave it on. Um, the Heart Math Institute has indicated that the neurons of the heart actually are more powerful than the neurons in the brain. And if the cross of planning can destroy the actual heart's heart, your heart muscle, if it can destroy it, then you'll be trapped in their cross of planning for longer. 
and you won't take the path into individuality. So um, one of the large organizations, pharmaceutical organizations has released a document that indicates all the adverse effects of the injection that they're doing on humanity. And that's a huge part of the adverse effects is it attacks the muscles of the heart. So now I am not saying, uh, again, uh, this is, if you have the injectable in you, that's okay. If you don't, that's okay. Uh, there's no judgment on whether or not it was taken. It's none of my business. Um, what I do want to say is, is that, again, they've been planning this. So you get to see it through a new lens. It was what it was. We get to accept it. Again, I do not need to condone evil. I just need to be aware that it is present. And I get to choose, so do you, how you interact with that field. We know that the cross of planning is coming to an end. We know that all of that destruction and, and whatever's taking place on this earth plane is um, their stance. It's their last kick at the can because the energy is moving. It is moving. So can you lean deeper into um, an awareness aspect? Keep your personal power. Can you lean into um, the wisdom that flows through you? And stay truthful to uh, not the conditioned mind, to that pure, pure essence, that uh, beauty that flows through, um, that, you know, strength that flows through. And you get to make that decision. And you get to either accept or reject this entire video <laughs> or podcast. You get to do what you need to do. But I would love to uh, invite you if you respond to this interaction and, you know, drop in your comments as well. I, Greg Braden has done a beautiful video I'm going to attach here that has a lovely meditation at the end to reconnect with those neural pathways from the heart to the, to the mind so that we can do this heart, heart math, um, create cohesion and not live in the chaos and the destruction. All right, friends, I hope you have a great day and uh, talk to you again.